What's up, Sens fans? Welcome to another episode of the Sens Tenio podcast. I can't even fathom how many episodes there are in season four yet. But here we are. We're here to talk some Sens hockey. And, you know, the last few games have been quite interesting. A couple across the pond in Sweden, and then two at home with the Islanders and the Panthers games. And I think we're going to touch on a lot of topics here tonight. Obviously, it's going to be talking about the Sens. So what our red flags are, what do we need to improve, and why is DJ Smith the hell spawn that just keeps on giving? So, Bennett, <laughs> I'm going to throw it over to you and only you tonight. What were your thoughts on Sweden and then the Isles and Panthers games? Yeah, it's been an interesting little stretch for the Senators. Somehow four games have seemed to stretch, well, have stretched over basically two weeks here because of the additional travel time yeah. to and from Sweden, uh, which makes it an interesting period to to analyze. So um, the Sens have played 17 games this season. They're now eight and nine. Um, we had two kind of like ropey wins in Sweden followed by two uh, kind of tough losses here back in North America. Yeah. Uh, both the wins in Sweden came uh, in extra time, either in overtime or the shootout. Uh, in the case of the Detroit game, the Senators also, you know, lost, a, you know, blew a 4 nothing lead at one point. Uh, and only some, you know, genuine heroics on the part of Tim Stutzler batting a puck out of midair with like 0.5 seconds left in overtime managed to save the Sens from a very embarrassing reversal of fortunes. Um, and then, you know, a tight game against the Minnesota Wild that, you know, John no Josh Norris with the lone shootout winner, like that's, you know, fine. Like the Sens didn't impress yeah, against yeah. a bad Minnesota team, but they also didn't lose. So it's kind of hard to fault them for that. And then I, I, to be honest, I missed the Islanders game, but I did have the great misfortune of being at the Florida game last night, uh, when the Sens got shut out five nothing on home ice. Um, it we we got the the Sens 2023-24 home game special featuring uh lots of fiery DJ chants. Uh, I started a couple of those. I'm proud to say, uh, you know, booing at the end of the second and at the end of the third and at the end of a four minute power play in which the Senators generated one shot. Yeah. Um, just getting, you know, chirped by Florida fans mm -hmm. who, I, I mean, like we got rinsed by a Florida team that were literally in cruise control. Like they were scoring like one goal exactly like eight minutes apart for the whole game, just enough to just kind of like mess with us yeah. and, you know, keep piling on the misery without ever really dominating the game. Oh, I mean, I suppose that does them a disservice. They did dominate the game, but like, the senators allowed them to kind of thing. Yeah. So uh anyway, I mean, I, I know you probably have thoughts on that particular game as well, but I think it's safe to say that for many fans online and at the game, it really did feel like a low point. Yeah. Uh, and we can touch on why it felt so low later on. Um, but uh, I can kick it back to you here to talk about your thoughts on the last couple of games. Yeah, I I think one of the things that really stood out to me is that, you know, we won the two games in Sweden, but it just, it never felt like comfortable. Yeah. It never felt yeah. as though the Sens were going to just cruise control, as you, as you said with the Florida game. Mm -hmm. um, I And I also kind of wanted to say, like, the Detroit game may have been a bit of a microcosm of the series or the season so far, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it isn't because they won like, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, the amount of time uh, and Ian Mendez touched on this with the athletic, you can go back seasons and seasons and seasons and seasons and seasons of DJ Smith and two goal periods of in the second period, two or three goal periods in the second period. Um, the sends are always on their heels in the second period. And mm -hmm. there's like, there's no excuse for that. Yeah. Um, he wrote the first, you know, they're still tired from earlier today. The third, 
they don't have a killer instinct, but the second yeah. period is when things are supposed to happen for your team. Mm -hmm. And it literally always happens for every other team that plays the senators. Yeah. Um, you look at, uh, I, I believe the Montreal Canadians are officially in last with, uh, how many second period goals they give up, but the Sens have played less games. So there's that. Um, and then, you know, the Islanders game, the second period, like, yeah, they got scored on, but then they scored two themselves. And I actually felt like they could come back. Mm -hmm. I actually felt that. And then they came out for the third period and it was like, you know, running up a hill. Like mm -hmm. they, they, it, no, no killer instinct, no, um, you know, physical presence, nothing from them. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the Panthers game last night was the most frustrating game the Senators have played all season. And yeah. it is officially, in my opinion, and I would assume most Sens fans, the lowest point of this season. Mm -hmm. Why? It's because this Florida team is good. But I just like I look at the parts on the Senators and I just I don't see without a good coach, how this team can't be really, really good. And, you know, rinsing teams like we got rinsed. Um, and it's, 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 it's extremely frustrating that you just, uh, you can just see how they just give up. They have no, mm -hmm. uh, they have no, you know, backbone. They have no, uh, maturity and it sucks and yeah like yes the players want to play and they play hard and stuff it doesn't like nobody's questioning that mm -hmm. but it's yeah they're not they're not giving it um they're not playing smart and they're not playing physically mature and stuff and <sighs> it's so frustrating to watch them play hockey right now mm -hmm. and I can tell you, I think I can pinpoint why it feels frustrating in some ways. It's like, on paper, the Senators are not that bad. Like, or not even like... On, on paper, this Senators team, like if we're if you're talking about the roster... In, I'm at, in this case, I'm actually not talking about the roster, okay. although we All can right. get to that in a second. Yeah. But it's like, in terms of like the raw statistics, like the point percentage of... 471 you know that's like literally like one win below 500 and at the end of november you know a month in which the senators have tended to struggle you know yeah i think fans would probably take that yeah. um special teams are slightly below average but not glaringly below yeah. average you know again goaltending save percentage you know 886 isn't great but the league average is 898 this is not a goaltender's league right now and, you know, the Senators, like, goaltending hasn't been good, I would say, like, statistically good, but, like, it hasn't necessarily been losing us a ton of games, like, maybe one or two. Yeah. So I think it's like, you look at all of these things, you know, a goal differential of literally zero, like, dead even, like, we're scoring as many goals as we're giving up. So it's like, we can't even say, like, we're just leaking tons of goals, like, yeah. the Senators are scoring fine. It's just... Why does it feel so bad that if like none of these things, like there's no glaringly obvious thing that's the problem here. And I think that what frustrates me and what probably frustrates a lot of other fans is that, that there doesn't seem to be any like real progress. Like, yeah, like the point totals are getting like marginally better season by season, but that's like, you know, compared to like how much better the roster is than it was a couple of seasons ago, you would think that the points totals would be much better than they were. And they're not like, they're just getting a little bit better. And you see kind of like the same patterns keep repeating, you know, the team still struggles to play defensive hockey. They still have an over-reliance on kind of like character guys like Hammond yeah. and McEwen that, are just you know have no place in like a in like an NHL roster and you know the, and despite having more talent than this team has had in literally like decades 
um, we're still last in the division heading into yeah. December. And it's like behind you know, some very bad teams. Behind some I very bad teams. And it's like, you know, like the, you know, waiting for the for teams like Toronto and Tampa and, you know, Florida and Boston in particular to like drop off. It's like, you know, that like scene from Monty Python of Lancelot, like running up the hill yeah. and just yeah, never yeah, getting yeah. there and never getting yeah. there. Um, it's a little bit like that. And so yeah. you just feel like inertia is setting in. And just one quick point, I think like before I pass it back to you, it's like part of why that is so frustrating is because like, the that feeling of kind of like helplessness and inertia and like apathy was what yeah. characterized like the dog days of like the Melnick era and like yeah. I think it's like Sens fans think that like we should be past that like we have an owner who's willing to invest in the team who's doing all of the right things so far in his like brief tenure and who's hired smart people to yeah. help support him and like I think we're frustrated that we're not seeing that translate down to like the on ice level yet and um you know it's like uh ben milks uh better known as brian five or six who i had the good fortune of checking out at eddie bauer one time when i used to work there he said exactly <laughs> the same thing he said apathy kills teams and it's like even when you know the sense were trading carlson and stone and you know duchene and fans were like getting ready to throw their jerseys on the ice and you know like you know, putting up Melnick out billboards and stuff. Like at least that was like a reaction. And then yeah. for a couple of seasons after, in the true doldrums of the rebuild, like people just didn't care. And it's like, what you don't want to see is that happening again when we've got a good roster on paper and we've got a good owner and the team is moving in the positive direction in so many different ways. And yet on ice, we see the same things happening over and over again. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And in, in the word there, apathy, it's just being so frustrated with the product that you just don't give a shit anymore. And yeah, you're... I saw so many people like, like, so to sort of like checking themselves out uh, yeah. on Twitter last I night. I literally saying, did that. Yeah, on you did our, that. Like we were yeah. tweeting and it just got worse. And I said, like, I don't want to be negative, but this team doesn't give me any other other option. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Corpus Allo, I think played a great game yesterday um his stats don't look it but he was he was a, a better than anybody on that team yesterday and mm -hmm. <laughs> i i love claude Giroux, and i love brady kachuk uh i love the, a lot of these guys on the team but you know when you have guys that come out and say you know uh, like shut up about this mm -hmm. whole noise about dj and then Giroux said today, like, you know, I thought our practices were hard and all this stuff, but it just didn't work out. I'm like, bullshit, man. You are a vet in the league. That mm. doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. A, a hardworking pack is, oh, good on you. Like, yeah. no, 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 no. You need to take some responsibility here. Yeah. You guys like, have hard, hard work will only take you so far. Exactly. If you don't have like, direction and clear directives yep. on you know how to succeed in the different offensive and defensive zones yep. how to how to execute properly how to develop that killer instinct that yeah you know the best of these teams have how to how to take control of a game and keep control of a game like florida did to us yeah you know it's like we had it against detroit and then we lost it and we barely scraped together a win yeah. and you can do that when you have talented players like we do but you can't yeah. do it consistently enough to be to take that next step and to like put it into like a real life analogy like how many teachers in your day like that were really great people and you loved going to their class but you kind of look back and you're like wow they were a shit teacher like I didn't learn much from them, but like I liked right. going to their class and stuff. Right. And I can think back to good teachers who were mm -hmm. like, they challenged you and they wanted you to do better. And, you know, I'm not in the room. I understand that. And like a lot of it's, it's hypothetical, but at the same time, I just feel like there's no consequences for these guys when they perform poorly. Like mm -hmm. DJ is, is a hand holder and th that is great. It's a great way to be a development coach. But then you look at these guys that need to take the next step and DJ can't do that himself. 
-hmm. So all this to say, like, and it's a perfect segue, Bennett, well, like what is the biggest red flag for this team? Yeah. I mean, I alluded to this before, but like none of the statistics that, you know, the sense have put up this season are like, especially damning, like a, yeah. you know, a small improvement to any of these different areas would be, would be enough to bring the sense over 500, right? Like, you know, if the power play was a slightly better, if the goaltending save percentage was slightly better, if the, you know, the goal differential was slightly more positive, but it's like, that sort of speaks to it. That it's like, there's no, the days of like the glaring holes in the roster of, we don't have a right sided defense. We don't have a goalie. We don't yeah. have forward depth. Those are behind us. We yeah. have all of those things we have when everybody's healthy and, you know, that's a factor, although I don't think that's a decisive factor so far yeah. this season. It's like when everyone's healthy, this team has a deep defensive core. It has three very good forward lines, and it has decent goaltending that should be enough to get you league average. Yeah. And I think it's clear to me at this point that the problem is not a hardware problem. The problem is a software problem. And the software yeah. comes from the coaching and it comes from the mindset that you go into games with. And it seems that like this team we've all said on this podcast for a while has been under coached. Like you think that they're putting a lot of faith in just like guys, like raw talent and ability to come yeah. true. And when you have talented players that will happen sometimes but not often enough for you to take the next step and start to control games from the start start to see things out when you have a lead you start to regain the lead when you never had it to begin with like all of the things that kind of like smart savvy and successful teams do the senators struggle to do Absolutely. and i see that at this stage as predominantly a coaching issue i think it's clear that the talent that is behind the bench in Ottawa is not sufficient to help this team take the next step that it needs to take. I think that the talent is there available and could be found. You know, I, I know that, uh, I know that teams don't like to release their employees mid season, but I think that there's guys who aren't employed right now. Two coaches just got fired in the last week. There's other coaches that have been out of a job for a minute or two prior to the season like yeah i think there's people out there that the senators could hire tomorrow that could make an immediate impact on this team and make it immediately better and as an aside i would also want to see the assistant coaches go as well i think they're also yeah. second rate and it just doesn't all fall on dj himself um i think that there's a lot of blame to go around for everyone behind the bench and that uh kind of ties into a you know a couple things i was going to ask um we got a question on twitter from ali farhat that kind of you know molding that question is you don't really want to fire somebody mid-season um and outside hiring is tough because you know that may not be the guy that you want mm -hmm. um and so so their question was you know can you go ahead with either davis payne or Jack Capuano. And I mean, I think you've already answered the question that it's a resounding no. No, I don't think so. I think that it would be such a waste for this team. Now that we have new ownership, we have new money coming in. You know, we have, uh, I mean, like we've said it before, like the senators were, you know, a no-go zone for just about anybody smart or talented in the NHL because <laughs> of how you know, difficult of a person Eugene Melnick was to work with and to work yeah. for, you know, the fact that, you know, you would sort of assume that pay would not be commensurate with what they could make playing for another team or like working for another team, uh, just old school ways of thinking, all of that stuff made it so that the senators were not a desirable destination. But I think that's changing. And I think yeah. that, you know, the team now and Lauer is a well-respected guy. He comes in with a lot of, you know, positive buzz and good feelings and clout he's willing to invest in this team i think that the horizons of who the senators could go out and acquire are broader than they have been in a long long time and i wouldn't want to see us take this opportunity to find somebody good and you know give it to like a middling you know assistant coach to just like muddle the way through the rest of the season like 
you know, go out there and get somebody good. And it's like there's teams, you know, there, there, there's there's bodies out there that could yeah. that could do the job, you know, that aren't currently employed by an NHL team and that could make, you know, a better case here. And, you know, if, if you swap out the head coach and you wait until the season to, like, swap out the assistants, like, at least that's something, but... Yeah, I I kind of like had a had a thought, but I I would be very uh intrigued to know DJ Smith's actual salary because I bet you he makes less in, in a lot like in his 3-year deal than he does than that that some coach make in a year. Oh, like I bet you certainly. he's yeah. he's like a half million dollar salary type guy and like that that is an ode to the Melnick era Mm -hmm. that is an underpaying coach that are undervalued. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you you went and got a Toronto Maple Leafs assistant coach. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it didn't work out, but you kept him around for six seasons. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, Like DJ is one of the most tenured coaches in the NHL at this point. I don't. And for what? And I'll have like the, figures in front of me but yeah yeah, exactly like for what like what he hasn't accomplished anything he's made the playoffs in zero seasons yeah i looked at uh, came kind of close to making the playoffs last year and that's about as good as it's gotten and i i look at the guys that have been fired jay woodcroft and dean evison for example uh somebody posted their winning percentages and it's like they're both 650 or 65 671 yeah dj's is is in the fours yeah um it's like he's i think if you move on from him you absolutely clean house with your uh your assistants you've got to um, yeah and something interesting that i i when i was watching the uh the senator's video that they released on the parker mcdonald he was uh a cancer uh sur- survivor so to speak um mm-hmm. It, that was honored yesterday at uh, the Panthers game. And Steve Seos actually introduced himself as the general manager to him. So mm-hmm. I, I like, I, it was a small thing, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, um, in fairness, like I think trying to explain the nuances of hockey executive structure yeah. to like an eight year old or perhaps like a little I, bit I get more that, than but needs I, to be. I, I like, mean, just be like, I, yeah. yeah, I'm the general manager. Cause it's like, yeah. what's the president of hockey operations? It's like, well, kid, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, well, usually there's an extra layer scrub. of management between. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, I probably am thinking too much into that, but I don't think fi- like firing a coach without a GM in place matters zilch. No, I also has to sign yeah. off on it anyways. Yeah. It's like, I, I do not care about that at all. It's like, I think that like, listen, I think it's clear from the way that Ann Lauer and Steos have spoken since they came in here that like, they didn't want to do any of this shit until the end of this season. I think that's yeah. very clear. I think yeah. if all things had been equal and their hand hadn't been forced with Pierre Dorian, they would have preferred for him to stay on until the end of the season. Yeah. I think all things being equal, they wanted to trust DJ and let him stay on until the end of the season. But their hand has already been forced with Pierre Dorian. You know, yeah. you know, evidence came to light of his sort of like Mouth general in of his incompetence essentially yeah. and he didn't have an incredible track record to fall back on so yeah. they rightfully canned him slash he possibly resigned we've never entirely got like a resolution yeah. on that yeah. um but it's like i think it's pretty clear that like they didn't want to have to do that they wanted to wait um and i think that they probably feel the same way about dj but i honestly think that like events I, I would think that the events are going to force their hand at some point, but I mean, we're, this is the first of three days off before our next game. I honestly, truly thought he would be gone this morning. I thought he would have been like, we would have had you an know, announcement last night. Right. And it's and just like, like, I, it, I find it crazy that like, like I know that Steos and Anlo don't want to be seen as the guys who come in and just fire everybody. Like I know but... that they want to take their time and, you know, appear measured and you know get things right but it's just like like once you started it's like you know like you didn't want to fire have to fire dorian but you did and you had to and at this point it's like just the season is on the line like we're you know 
a shade below 500. Yeah. A new coach bounce could be enough to take us into a playoff position. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so seven games in hand. Yeah. It's seven or six on Tampa. Yeah. Who is in a playoff position. We have so much like potential here yeah to like not just climb back into it but like vault over teams but it's like yeah i don't currently have confidence that like we're gonna win enough of those games in hand for it to matter like you know fans do this thing and everybody does it it's completely fine it's like when you calculate your the games in hand you look at it and you just imagine every single one of them as a win because absolutely you're like, like oh, i think it goes you're like oh like seven saying, times two it's like yeah, oh 14 it, points it, it so, goes yeah. without saying that yeah you have to win the games in hand in order for them to matter yeah but damn like the games in hand are still important they're, they're still valuable and like when you don't have confidence in your team and your coach's ability to like win those games yeah. to like take advantage of the schedule that you've been dealt and yeah you know sneak up and vault over teams it's like it sucks if you feel like that doesn't matter and like right now like i feel like it doesn't really matter like and i i mentioned this a couple times like how many times were there teams that were kind of faltering like the leafs couldn't fight like samsonov couldn't stop anything vasilevsky was hurt yeah. you know like there Toronto are, is the same number of regulation wins as San Jose. Yeah. And it's like I, I San also, Jose like the started loser like point. historically badly. Yeah. Loser and point benefits everybody. Yeah. I like Seattle has five overtime losses. So there's five points for you. Mm-hmm. And just the Sens don't have the gusto to get into a tie game and stay there yeah. or friggin' win it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're not going to overtime. And I just... I look at this team and I I say like, yeah, the structure is bad. There is not a lot of structure. You know, the system, so to speak, isn't working. I look at how Jacob Chikrin is playing and I'm like, how do you go from a guy who has received Norris votes yeah. to this? Yeah. How do you take Thomas Shabbat, who is consi- widely considered... Uh, like a shoe win for a 2024 Olympic spot where he kind of just looks regular. Yeah. Jake Sanderson also has kind of just looked regular in the last few games. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying to myself, at what point, if you're Steve Steos, do you just say this, this team was supposed to make the playoffs? Yeah. And it's not, it's like, they are not on that trajectory. Mm -hmm. So do you pull the shoot now or do you wait till game 42 where you know, or 41 and you're just like, well, we're screwed. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you are, you know, uh, Michael Andlauer has come in and said, this is going to be a first class organization. Yeah. Great. Make it that. Yeah. Go get a guy who is currently out there. Like if Dean Evison came in here, got us to the playoffs and we lost in the first round fine yeah like fine but at least we got there and then we can work on it yeah because i i look at 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 ottawa's roster compared to minnesota's and it is ottawa's roster player for player is better than minnesota's hands down absolutely so no you can't tell me you like you can't look at me and say well, the, the roster is actually just not that good. No, BS. No. This team underperforms consistently because they have to be handheld mm-hmm. by a coach who doesn't know how to coach well. Yeah. I And like, to me, I mean, like the obvious layup to hit is Bruce Boudreau. Like that's just, um, sorry, uh, not Boudreau. Why Claude, do I always... Claude Julian. Claude Julian. Thank you. He's sorry. the I... obvious guy. He is they, the... They, uh, he, they're, they're he both scouts goals. here both all the kind time. Of Canadian names. Yeah. Um, but it, to me, it's like Claude Julian would be such a layup. Like he, yep. like he lives in the city. He's bilingual. Yep. He has yep. a Stanley Cup ring. He coached like a Bruins team that was dominant year in, year out, while yep. having arguably less talent than this Senators team currently yep. has. Like, yep. with all respect to future Hall of Famer Patrice Bergeron, you and know, like Dan O'Chara and, and, and Chara and all of those guys, but it's like, yeah, 
until they had Pasternak, like you could argue that they didn't have any genuine superstars. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. and that was after Julian's tenure there. You know, it's like to yeah. me, it's like it just seems like an, like if you want a guy who's a systems coach who can take, you know, players that were, you know, like great but not like incredible and turn them into a world beating team year in year out yeah. like it just seems like such an obvious choice yeah. to me and, and it's like you know guy it's is... like how can you how can you carry on with guy a guy like dj who's n- accomplished nothing in this league and yeah. accomplished nothing with this team yeah. and isn't improving players and isn't you know helping this team take a step how can you run with him instead of when you have like you know like incredibly well respected and well regarded coaches sitting on the sidelines twiddling their thumbs. Yeah, I I think you look at Claude Julian's tenure. He has two seasons under 500. Mm-hmm. One season he was fired on the Devils and mm-hmm. he had a 650 say uh, like a winning percentage. Mm-hmm. He's a good coach. He's mm-hmm. won a cup. He's literally at every Ottawa home game. He like is this guy. This guy is basically a season ticket holder. Yeah, except he gets paid to be there. Like he goes scouts for the Blues and says, "All right, cool." Like yeah. the Blues are going to let him go if he wants to be a coach. Yeah, it, there's it, it, no question. Yeah. So to me, I look at what, Claude Julian and I say that guy is going to take Tim Stutzla from great to elite. Yeah. yeah. He is going to take a guy like Shane Pinto and turn him into one of the most dominant top nine centers in this league. Why? Mm -hmm. Because he will be on your third line and just work guys. He will take Josh Noah. Like everybody on this roster will get better with Claude Julian. Mm -hmm. And I look at DJ. He's a good development coach. No questions asked. Mm Mm-hmm. But when it comes time to make the playoffs, time's up. It's and it's like so few teams run with a guy from you know the beginning of the rebuild to like the time they're a contender. Like yeah. it basically never happens. Yeah, for a reason because it's yeah. hard. It's hard to take to shift your role as a coach from the results don't matter, boy boys just vibes keep it up play your game yeah. work on your skills and it's all going to be okay yeah. it's hard to then walk that back and say all right boys results do matter now shape yeah. the fuck up or i'm gonna bench you and, and it's I like think... i don't think dj has the balls to yeah. do that and yeah. you need someone to come in who's gonna say to a player like timmy you know what yeah, you have 22 points in 17 games you're gonna run this fucking league in a couple of years but you know what you're giving the puck away too much and you're being lackadaisical in the offensive zone and you're yep. not scoring your breakaways and hitting your layups. So yeah. sit and watch while somebody does it for a period and then yeah. come back to me. And, and it's I like, also... I say this as like a certified Timmy fucking fanboy. Yeah. Like this guy is incredible. He's the most talented player we've had in years. Um, and it's like, he's his results are good. Kind of like the Senators. His results are good on paper, but you can tell that he's not hitting that next level. And you talked about the game against Detroit being a microcosm of the Sen season. Tim Stutzler is also kind of a microcosm of the Senators right now. You know, all the talent in the world, you know how good he's going to be. You know how right now he's honestly kind of good, but it's like, you know that like there's another level that's not being hit right now. And that once it does, things are going to change. Absolutely. And, you know, the the ultimate thing is, is this team doesn't adjust. They don't uh, improve after, you know, there's no change in their play style if they just got scores on, scored on or they just scored. It's yeah. the just same send thing. Send out that fourth over, line of fucking yep, McEwen and yep. Hamanek and just let them score on you again. Like, you know... One of the things that I've been looking at and Josh Norris, it looks useless on the first power play. And that's yeah. not because Josh Norris is useless. It's yeah. because it's just not working. So why isn't Josh Norris on your second power play where he can then work over 
some mm-hmm. of those second PK units. Yeah. Um, I just, I also think sometimes you have to work with a player and improve their skills. And I'm just, I'm not seeing it. Yeah. So to that point, I think we can both agree the biggest red flag, the, you know, what this team needs to do and improve is go the out elephant and in get every a legit room. coach. Yeah. It's yeah. time. It's time. And, and fans are at becoming apathetic. They, yeah. the, the attendance is steadily declining because nobody wants to go see that shit. Yeah. How tired are people of watching their favorite team go four and seven at home? Yeah. It's uh, it's hard to watch, to get excited about dump and chase hockey if yeah. you dump too late and chase too slowly. Yep. Why? Because that's the DJ way. Yeah. And we've talked about if we don't make uh, playoffs, it's playoffs or pitchforks. And we're awfully close to pitchforks. And we're not even at game 20, but there's still a lot of runway left and things can change really fast. But the psychology for these guys, the systems for these guys, or the structure for these guys, it's just not there anymore. Yeah. They uh, DJ, they may not say it, but DJ has lost the room. DJ yeah. has, a, look at Corpus Allo's freak out yesterday at those defensemen. Yeah. Um, he, he's yelling at his own players because they're not doing their jobs. And he's, he's and having to do doing so doing much it. more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ultimately it's, it's still early in the season and there's still a lot of time to, to turn things around. Yeah. And hopefully the next time we record, we've either won or fired the coach. Yeah. And with that said, Thank you all for so, so much for watching. Um, I hope this uh, Centennial Matless podcast uh, has been a good one for you guys to listen to. You can find us on all social media platforms, X, Twitter. That's the same thing, just to clarify. <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, we're on Reddit. We're in the Discord servers. The sen- we're the, the Centennial. Centennial or a yeah. variation, Centennial, the Centennial um go listen to our stuff enjoy our content uh because it's hard to watch the sends but you can listen to two guys three guys bitch and complain about them i'll tell you that much um and quickly before we wrap up uh as you can see if you're watching at home i have a mustache and there are uh just a few days left in mo in november so if you have the ability to donate please do it would be greatly appreciated to donate to mental health for men and uh what was it what is it uh when you get the the thingy that that can't remember that form of cancer but they, that type prostate? of cancer, prostate cancer prostate. research yeah. wow i was on a roll and then it didn't go you're uh you, you were this close this close and that, that's the the evidence that i'm a sense fan thanks for watching everybody go sense go Later.